Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In our previous videos, we've talked extensively on concepts such as tow, camber, and caster. All these terms are related to the steering geometry of a vehicle. So in this video, we'll be talking about the most important steering principle, the Ackermann steering geometry. Imagine a situation where you're driving a car. You arrive at a sharp turn, to negotiate the turn, you rotate your car steering. This rotates the front wheels of your car in the direction of the turn. Well, why does this happen? To grasp this fully, one should have a good understanding of how a wheel works. Let's take a closer look at how a wheel works now. For a wheel to work effectively, there should be no slipping between the wheel and the road. When we split the velocity components of the wheel, we can notice that it has two separate types of velocities acting on it. One is the rotational velocity of the wheel and the other one is the translational velocity of the wheel. When we add the two bottom components of the wheel, we can notice that they both cancel each other. This is because the translational velocity and the velocity of rotation at the bottom are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Let's assume a hypothetical case where the car is continuing its motion in the forward direction even after the rotation of the steering wheel. Let's again check the rotational and translational velocities of the front wheel of the car. You'll notice that the rotational velocity of the car is inclined but the translational velocity is straight. This means that both the velocities have different magnitude and directions. And this in turn means that the wheel is slipping. The only way to avoid this slipping is by making sure that the direction of the translational velocity is equal and in the direction of the rotational velocity. This is possible only when the whole car turns. This is done by steering the front wheels of the car. But there's a problem here. During steering motion, that is, when the whole car is turning, the two front wheels of the car will not be covering the same distance. This can be well explained with the following illustration. Here you'll notice that the wheels of the car have different parts of motion. In the rear wheels, this is tackled with the help of a differential gear. In the front wheel, this is tackled with the help of a design principle called the Ackermann steering geometry. If you've ever noticed the front wheels of your car turning about a corner, you'll see that the front inside tire will rotate more than your front outside tire. This is done to compensate for the different distances each of these tires travel without slipping. The angle at which these wheels rotate can be explained with the following illustration. Now let's have a top view of the car with just the four wheels of it. Here you can see that the four wheels are connected together by an imaginary external point. Here it is vital that the angle between the wheels and the line is always 90 degrees. So as the turning radius of the wheels changes, the angles of the two front wheels also changes accordingly. Well, that's it for this video, guys. If you have any doubts, drop it down on the comment section below. We'll read them all. And we'll meet again in the next one. Until then, bye.